I get a lot of mixes that are imbalanced and I thought I'd make a video on some things you can look for to get a balanced mix. Also some things that you should do in your studio or just things you should look out for. Obviously it has a lot to do with acoustics, but I'm going to give you some visuals and things that we can discuss that might help you out. So if you're curious to know more, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to Distinct Mastering. My name is Freddie. I'm a mastering engineer, producer, DJ, and president of Sleeping Giant Music. For over two decades, I've helped artists grow their careers, and now I'm here to help you with your music production skills. If you like my content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. Now let's chat about ways that you could get a balanced mix before sending it to me for mastering. Hey guys, all right, balanced mixes. It's one of the most sought after things that anybody doing a mix can do. And there's a lot of factors that come into play when you're doing your mix. Number one thing that I can recommend when trying to get a balanced mix is monitoring. Monitoring is the most important thing that you need to focus on. You need to have decent quality monitors, but even then you need to have a decent room. If you don't have room acoustics or you haven't put any money into your monitoring, then a really good thing that you can do is use reference tracks. And I can't stress this enough because reference tracks are going to give you a guide. So for example, if you are listening to your mix in decent monitors with no room acoustics, and you compare it to a reference track, mind you, you need to level match it, and I have a video on that, I'll leave you a link up above. But having the reference mix playing at the same volume alongside your mix will tell you how that track is acting in your monitors in your room. So, if the track, the reference, sounds amazing everywhere else, and you need to use something that's in a similar vein to your music, but you know sounds amazing in lots of systems, in your earbuds, in your car, in the club, wherever. If the reference sounds a bit dull, then your room probably has something going on where the highs are being brought down. Or if the reference sounds boomy, then you probably have some bass buildup, but the goal is to try to get your mix to sound like the reference, which is going to get you in the ballpark so that when you play your mix in those other environments with your environment taken out of the equation, it competes. The point is, is the reference track is being played in the acoustics with the bad acoustics or whatever's going on in your room. So it kind of gives you a guide. Now, when you're thinking of the reference, you are not thinking about how loud a specific thing is. You need to look at it more on a global scale, like, how much bass does this song have in relation to mine? How much highs? How's the mid range? You can listen to where things are placed, but then you're getting a little more deep into the actual mix when we're trying to figure out the actual overall balance of everything. And so getting a balanced mix involves really good monitoring, good room acoustics, or using reference tracks. And even if you have all great monitoring and great room acoustics, even me, I still will use reference tracks just as a reference. Your ears get tired. You need to, so you need, sometimes you need to be brought back to reality and a reference track will just give you a comparison. The next thing you might want to check into is you need to train your ears and that just comes with experience. Unfortunately, there's no sure shot way to train your ears quickly. The more you do this stuff, the better you're going to get. You can take some ear training if you'd like, but ultimately just spending time in the studio and working on mixes is very important and training your ears is key because then you're going to know what's wrong. But that takes time. So if you're a beginner, unfortunately, I don't have a shortcut to training your ears. But getting to know your room, getting to know your monitors is very important and training your ears in your space is very important and reference tracks will help you do that. Reference tracks will teach you what's wrong with your room. If something sounds great somewhere else and then you take it, the reference into your room, you're gonna hear things with the problems. So I can't stress that enough. Now another tip that I would recommend for getting balanced mixes is one of the things I like to do is mix in mono and that kind of just helps me get the levels of things. Uh, it's not necessarily the 
perfect way to get a balanced mix, but it does help me figure out where things might want to be placed and then summing to mono, you get a different perspective. I did a video on this, so I'm not going to go in depth. I'll leave you a link up above for that. But the next thing I want to talk about is creating space with panning, which will help get a good balance as well. And mixing in mono helps me pan things and get the levels right. So panning will help create a sense of space among your mix. And these are all basic mix theories. You've probably heard all of these, so I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds. So panning will help you create space from left to right, and so that'll help get you a balanced mix. Obviously, you want the majority of your mix in the middle, and then you want some things on the sides, but when you sum the mono, you don't want to lose things due to phase cancellation. Mixing in mono can help you there, so make sure you check out that video. Another thing that can help balance your mix is and create space is delays and reverbs. Those will give you depth, the front to the back. So you can use that stuff to help get the mix and everything sounding tidy, but then when it comes down to it, even though you've got the mix the way you like, you might have a big bass buildup or you might have too many highs and no bass because your room is fooling you. And once again, I keep referencing this, that's where the reference mixes come into play. Now, another thing that you can use to help guide you along the way is a spectrum analyzer. And, you know, sometimes people overlook this. I like to use my ears and I always recommend you use your ears. You shouldn't do this stuff visually, but if you want a visual guide, this can help you out. This can help tell you if you are on the right track. And what I did here is I loaded up a bunch of recent clients' final mixes that they sent to me for mastering. And I wanted to share just, you know, I can't play these for you due to copyright or YouTube restrictions and and just client privilege. You know, I, I don't want to play you stuff that's not out yet and not released because some of these tracks are signed to labels. Uh, some of them, I just don't know what's going on with them. It's not my business. But that being said, I'm just going to show you what they look like on a spectrum analyzer. And we're going to talk about them. So let's start with this first one here. You know, I'm just going to go in the middle and we're not even listening. We're just looking. And you can tell a lot of what's going on here. You can see that in the beginning of the song here at the intro, there's not a lot of low end sub information. And then you've got a little bit of a dip here at 600 to 1K and another small dip here at 2 to 3K or 2.5 to 4.5 essentially. And so as you progress through the song, you can see a little bit more low end information comes in and just by the looks of this, this looks like a relatively balanced mix. So, you know, that this can be a really good visual guide. There are some peaks and valleys here, but, you know, that's music. Doesn't look like there's a lot of low-end information down here, which you may or may not be needed depending on the style of music. So let's take a look at this next one here. Looking at this one, you can obviously see there's a huge hump. And so... There's obviously probably something wrong with his the low end information in this person's mixing environment because they are probably compensating for bass that is being lost in the room. Now, in a perfect world, I would probably tell them to turn this down or I would, you know, turn it down before mastering and then master from there, but that may not be the case without hearing it, you you know, you really need to listen to this stuff. We're just going off of a visual, but I'm kind of using these visuals as an example of what you might want to look for when you're doing your mixes. So that right there visually looks like something could be going on. Let's take a look at the next one. Once again, this is really just for demonstration purposes. So this one is more of the common style mix that I see. You've got a big hump and then it kind of slopes down I see a lot of mixes come in this way. And I find that probably they do have bass buildup in their room or they have some room nodes that are causing frequencies to disappear in their room. And what they end up doing is they end up compensating for that low end. Or it's a lot of electronic music mixes with heavy low end, heavy kick drums, house music. And that's another common thing that you can see. Um, but you wanna have some clarity in the mix and a good balance. So. If you're looking at something like that, you might consider turning the kick and the bass down. 
Now, having a reference to compare will give you a guide, and then taking your mix to, say, your car or your earbuds has also give you another perspective. So that is another mix here. Let's take a look at this one. This one has a huge spike up here in the 4K region, which is uh, just for that moment. Um, but as you can see, there is less low end information over here, especially in this 100 to 60, 60 to 100, 30 to 100, essentially. And then you've got, you know, it kind of goes like this. It just goes, oh. And so this would probably be, a, be, just by visually looking at it, a very mid-range heavy mix. Um, it's got some high frequency content that popped in right there. Um, actually, it looked like we were playing through a breakdown. So let's go right here. And so, yeah, you see this is dropping right here. It's very interesting. It looks like we hit another break. Okay, boom. You can kind of see what's going on in the song just by looking at a frequency analyzer. It's really interesting to look at it this way without hearing anything. I've even got, you know, I've even got my monitors muted here. So, so yeah, look, you see some, some dips popping in and out. You know, it doesn't look like there's a lot of high end right here. And in this master, I'd probably definitely bring in some 16K, maybe even some 12K. You know, that way, this will give you a visual guide to when you're doing your mix. If you're on the right track, make sure you put your spectrum analyzer on your master and you put it after all your processing. Now let's go into the next one here. Looking at this one. It looks like it's got some low end content, dips down in this lower mid to mid range area where the vocals really sit right here and then it kind of boosts back up in these upper mids and then back down right around this seven, eight to eight K, nine K. And so kind of interesting. Um, you know, it's almost like a, a S in a sense. It's like, so, I would probably try if I was mixing and I wasn't hearing this. Now, once again, it's all about what it sounds like. You know, visuals are one thing, but hearing it is is key. But it looks pretty balanced. It looks like it's bouncing around. This is a band, so this is a full song. It's got a full arrangement, bass, guitars, vocals, drums, and you can see that it's got some some a lot of dynamics. It's very quiet in the intro. It builds up, it drops down. And so, yeah, it's relatively balanced, but it's got some issues up here that you might want to address in the mix. And if you could find those instruments and tame those down or figure out what might be causing that, that is the key to getting a balanced mix. Last but not least, I've got a really good mix right here. It's a house music song. It came in solid. Um, this it still had that big kick drum, as you can see. But overall, it's it's got the slope down. But I remember doing this master, and this this was a really good mix overall. It, it didn't need a ton of work. Um, definitely didn't need any any solid repairs, if you might say. So. Hopefully this kind of gives you a roadmap to getting a balanced mix because I see a lot of different mixes come in all over the place and sometimes I wonder if they are even looking at a spectrum analyzer. This one that I'm using right here by SIR Tools is free. This is just the free version. So I suggest you download that or Ableton comes with one, you know, whatever DAW you're using usually comes with one. So just make sure that you Pop one on, have it in your template, have it in your DAW ready to go. Check out what you got going on occasionally because it's gonna give you a visual and help you might maybe hear something going on in your room that you didn't know was there because you won't know the problems in your room until you actually figure that out with either reference tracks or using a spectrum analyzer like this to help guide you. So I hope these tips help you and get your mixes balanced. And when you are ready to send them to mastering, be sure to hit me up. I do offer free stereo mastered samples, snippets for first time clients. Check the link below if you'd like to get your sample. Maybe hear something going on in your room 
that you didn't know was there because you won't know the problems in your room until you actually figure that out with either reference tracks or using a spectrum analyzer like this to help guide you. So I hope these tips help you and get your mixes balanced. And when you are ready to send them to mastering, be sure to hit me up. I do offer free stereo mastered sample snippets for first time clients. Check the link below if you'd like to get your sample. And that's an overview of how you can get a balanced mix before sending your stuff to get mastered. If you're looking for mastering, be sure to hit me up. I do offer first time clients one free stereo mastered sample. So check the link below to get your free stereo mastered sample. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. Once again, my name is Freddie from Distinct Mastering, and have a great day.